once again you are welcome to GC Tutorials. On this platform, we make social studies simple for you. Thanks for your likes and your subscription. And here we are again. I'm going to talk about something interesting. And I believe you have heard so much about space and what is actually uh, in the universe, talking about the heavenly bodies. So today, I welcome you. Let's get into the solar system. All right, so the solar system is our our topic for today. All right, so the solar represents the sun. It's talking about the sun. Now, the sun and its system, that means it is not just the sun, it is not just the energy of the sun or how the sun um, brightens or shows um, or throws its light, okay? Now, it has to do with the planet. It has to do with the planet. Day in, day out, we see the reflection of the sun. So, if I sketch my sun, I put it here. Some beaming reflection. This is my sun. You can also draw it. I will put some other heavenly bodies here and these are going to represent my planet. Now, we will be focusing on eight planets. We will be focusing on eight planets. I know some of you might have heard that there were nine planets in the solar system. Yes, now we have eight planets. So astronomers, astronomers are people who study planets and other heavenly bodies in space. So they actually look at the things in the universe. Now, we have had great people such as Galileo the Galileo, all these people trying to discover something in the solar system or in the universe. This man I'm talking about was able to use a telescope to discover the sun. So there are Earth-based objects such as telescope and there are also space-based objects such as probes or these days technology has helped us and we have satellites in the system. The satellites are there to monitor these planets and the activities in space. So, they, as researchers continue and astronomers continue to dig out and do more research, they found out that the ninth planet, which was called Pluto, discovered in the 1930s, they later said that Pluto doesn't have the force or that energy or that gravitation to revolve around the sun. So, the planet that I'm going to actually sketch here revolve around the sun on their orbits. So, the world I'm talking about orbits. So, the orbits are the path of the planet. And they are not in circular shape. They are in elliptical shape. So elliptical means that they look like shape of an egg. So they are oval. So you don't draw them as circular. So you might not have all the lines here, but I'll be showing you a video and you see how the planets revolve around the sun on their orbit. So the orbit, the path. We'll be looking at 
I'll put Earth here because we live on Earth. The other planets, the first one, the closest, Mercury. There's another one called Venus. So Mercury is there, Venus is there, then Earth. Our own Earth is a third planet, followed by Mars. So I give details concerning the planets in the video that I'm about to show to you. Followed by Jupiter. That's the largest planet in the solar system. Then Saturn. Neptune. Sorry, Uranus and Neptune, making it A. So Pluto has been degraded um, to become a dwarf planet. So as at August 2006, we have um, from August 2006, after Pluto has been relegated or degraded by the International Astronomical Union, we now have eight planets in the solar system. So how do you define the solar system? The solar system is a term used to describe the sun and the eight planets. The sun and its relationship with the eight planets. Why do I use the word relationship? The sun is actually connecting all these planets and using its energy and force to control them and keep them in that circular motion or if you want to say elliptical motion that's fine the elliptical motion and they go around and come back to their normal plane and then that is how they revolve on their orbits they are not on the same level because the closer the planet is to the sun the faster it moves because of the energy so you are closer to the sun's energy so you move faster so mercury is actually described as the fastest world planet so the first four one two three four are called inner planet they are called inner planet and then the last four the last four become the outer planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. They are the closest to the Sun. The Sun is so powerful. How is the Sun able to do this? So, two um, school of thoughts or researchers or group of researchers have argued about the position of the Sun actually. So we have the what we call the heliocentric concept and then the geocentric concept. So heliocentrism and geocentrism. Now what are these people trying to say? These people believe that the sun, which is the helio, okay, in Greek, is in the middle of the solar system and the other heavenly bodies revolve around it. That is what the heliocentric people think or say or the concept says. Geocentric people believe the other one. Those, they say no, geo, which is the earth, mm -hmm, the study of rocks, earth, geology. So the earth is rather in the middle of the solar system and the other heavenly bodies, the sun and other stars, but the sun itself is a star, they move around the solar, sorry, they move around the earth. So that is the theory or the idea of the geocentric, the geocentric concept, the geocentric concept. So we are focusing on this one, the heliocentric. That's what we are using because it has been proven that because of the energy and the force that comes from the sun, 
it has this these gases that continue to burn about 70% of hydrogen gases and 28% of helium gases so 70% hydrogen 28% then we have nitrogen, oxygen, and some other gases forming the 2% or 1.8% with some other gases. These two gases, as huge as they are, as they meet, they combine and we call it fusion. Fusion occurs. And that becomes what we call nuclear fusion. So the continuous combination of these gases causing the sun to burn continuously or ceaselessly so the sun is always burning satellites or probes are being used to view the surface of the sun it looks very calm but when it gets closer and it zooms it reacts very violently it reacts very violently the energy of the sun is so huge it's so huge so when you look at this the planets are actually they are distance the earth is very far from it. We'll be looking at that distance very soon. But when you take this sun, which is a star, because it produces its own light, it is able to what? Control these planets and they are moving in that motion and with these forces, the forces that keep things to move in that circular motion. So we have the centripetal and centri centripetal and centrifugal forces. Okay. So the planets are able to orbit or reform around the sun. Reform around the sun. The sun is able to control them like the father or the mother any way you want to see them now let's give some facts about the sun let's give some facts about the sun yesterday we are actually looking at the solar system and what actually happens or takes place in this system we said it is a term used to describe the sun and the eight planets okay all right so now talking about the sun we'll give some facts so let's have our sun again here so on this side reflecting or using its energy to pull the planet closer to itself by the centripetal and centrifugal forces the planet continues to revolve around the sun so we will see Mercury, Venus that will come to our Earth our Earth has its moon which is its natural satellite so satellite anybody that revolves a planet okay anybody that revolves a planet we have artificial ones built by uh, men okay or inventors or researchers these scientists are able to do that but the natural one is our moon what appears in the night as the sun throws its light on it just a rock-like body so that is it and uh, our natural satellite. Of course, other planets also have their moons and they have a number of them. Jupiter has, Saturn has the largest so far. At first, with Jupiter that was leading with the number of moons 79, and these were the discovered ones, the ones they've named. There are more moons than the ones they've named and have been documented, are the ones we're talking about. So 79 for Jupiter, 82 for Saturn. At first, Saturn had 62, but a man called uh, Scott Shepard was able to discover 20 more moons or additional moons uh, around Saturn. So that shot its figure up to 
60, sorry, 82, leading Jupiter by three. Okay, let's focus on this. This moon you see right here is around 400 times the sun of the sun. That tells you how huge the sun is. The sun is so huge to the point that about 1,300,000 of the Earth planet can fit into it. That sounds so interesting and great. Can fit into the sun. 1,300,000 of the Earth planet can fit into the sun. That's so great. So you look at it from a distance, you think it is just a small thing. Always, and you see how the sun scorches people here on earth, but the distance is huge between the, the earth and the, um, um, the sun. Have if I do this distance of about 149.6 million. This is million, not meters, okay million kilometers that's the distance between the sun and the earth the sun and the earth between the moon and the earth that's our natural satellite and the earth uh, it's we have three um 84 yes 0.4 kilometers 384.4 kilometers. Yeah. So, sorry, three. That's 348. Okay. Ah, 348,400 kilometers. 348,400 kilometers. The distance between the moon and the earth. So we are able to see or receive moonlight. We are able to receive moonlight in the night. The sun, I've already told you, it undergoes nuclear fusion because of the presence of the hydrogen um, and helium gases. The hydrogen and helium gases. So the orbit of the earth. Going around, then we have the other planets. Then we have the other planets. Talking about the diameter or the size, okay, the size. So the diameter, you know, in circle, we look at, if we want to look at the size of the circle, we use the diameter. The line drawn from one end, which you call the circumference of the circle, to the other end. Okay, so looking at this, if I'm to put a rule here and draw a line, look at this, and then measure that of the earth, the circumference of the earth, to see how the earth can fit into the sun. You see how it can fit into the sun. We we'll have about um, we have about 109 times, 109 times, okay, of this, 109 times of the diameter of the earth fitting into the sun, the diameter of the earth fitting into the sun. So it tells you how massive or huge the sun is. So it couldn't be small because if it is small, then it can control the planets and cause them to orbit around it. Okay, it's like it pulls them to just keep moving and keep revolving around it. Keep revolving around it. And you see the force, the force of it. It's a huge heavenly body burning continually. At times it throws its huge fire, which we call the solar flares. The solar flares. 
So when the sun is, continues to burn as a result of a nuclear fusion, it throws a fire, like spitting out the fire, and those rain, they form rains of fire around it, makes it so powerful, but very violent and dangerous. So it has ultraviolet rays, these ultraviolet rays reach the sun, sorry, the surface of the earth, and scientists are proving that they are actually dangerous to our health. That's why we have the ozone layer, okay, um, uh, in the sky, shielding the direct ultraviolet rays from reaching the surface of the earth to affect mankind. All right, so we have looked at these simple facts about the sun. Talking about the weight, weight about 333 type, um, that's thousand times off. So the weight, the weight, 333,000 times the weight of the earth, the weight of the earth. So these are facts about the sun. We'll look the video, let's check it out and see how these planets orbit the sun or revolve around the sun. Let's check it out. Alright, so here we are. Um, we have an image here. So I'm going to be playing it as I explain some of the things I've already said when I was trying to give those informations on the board. So we've spoken about the sun in the middle of the solar system, as huge as it is. You can see it there with its reflection, beaming and trying to control all these planets. Now what we see here in colors, like rings that look like circles, they're actually not circular, but they are elliptical so oval shape oval shape these are the parts of the planet the parts of the planet and the parts of the planet are called orbits orbits o r b i t so the orbits are the part on which the planet travels so beginning from the closest okay closest to the sun we have Mercury, the orbit of Mercury, so the first one. So we can count from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So if we are to go by the new definition or classification, we say the solar system is the sun in the middle of the eight planets. Um, as we mentioned that... Pluto had been degraded as one of the major planets. So they were supposed to be nine. So in August 2006, that announcement was made by the International Astronomic, um, Astronomical Union and they declared or relegated Pluto as a planet and they considered it as a dwarf planet. So you can see this big one, the last ring, tells you that this one is far from the sun, very distant from the sun. And it will take so many years for it, okay? If we are counting years on Earth, and we are counting a year, uh, we have 365 and quarter days. This is planet Earth, where we live, okay? So we have 365 and quarter days. The year ends for us. But look at Mercury. Mercury, the fastest planet. Why is it the fastest? The sun's energy is so powerful that as a planet is closer to it, it moves faster. So the more or the, 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 the much closer planets move faster and they revolve around the sun, and they come back to their normal position and that's how it continues so if i play this 
you will see how mercury is moving very very fast it takes about 88 days 88 days for mercury to just complete one revolution that 88 days we are still counting 365 and quarter days so if you find yourself on mercury if only life exists there you'll be celebrating your end of year or what you call Xmas or Christmas every 88 days that sounds interesting people will love to be there so they can be enjoying every 88 days so that's mercury very fast that my mouse or the cursor is trying to chase so that is it it's around that part yes very fast but it is not the hottest the second radar becomes the hottest so it has zoomed in and we see the second is venus venus the planet which is also called the morning star the morning star yeah and they refer to they, they, they actually name them after roman gods okay so uh, it represents love and beauty okay the roman god representing love and beauty so how beautiful it is so we are unlikely to see stars in the morning but we said venus actually brightens to the point that even in the morning we can still see it appearing okay so that is why they call it the morning star the morning star people also described it as the earth twin so this is the earth they are showing here so the earth twin is venus because they look alike they look alike their surfaces but venus is very hot because of the um gases on that planet and the continuous activity or continuous um, um uh, activity of earthquake okay so they have active venus have very active earthquake causing it to be very very hot so it's described as the hottest planet the hottest planet okay so that is our earth so we can see how they are moving after venus we have mars named after the roman god of war mars so that also called a red planet because of how reddish it looks the surface looks when it appears so that is mars so we see that is a um um, um. so we have earth so we have mercury then followed by venus then the third planet is our own earth then we have mars okay we have mars then after mars we have the largest planet in the universe or in the cosmos the universe that's jupiter jupiter so let me check this and see whether it appears here okay so jupiter this is it this is it just following so they can't all move at the same time because their parts are different and their distance from the sun is also different and for that matter they can move at the same pace that is why you find some moving faster completing their revolution before others then we so this is jupiter the largest planet and it has had the largest moon or number of moons so when we talk about the number of moons the moons even count over uh, up to over 100 but because we are looking at the named ones so when the astronomers discover the moons they name them so the named ones the recognized ones um, um add up to 79 so 79 so it was leading and um researchers or astronomers did more research and found out that as at the time jupiter had 79 moons saturn the planet that looks like uh, some ball here with a ring around it very beautiful and colorful full of gases as well was having 62 moons as at the time jupiter was having 79 moons so what happened was that as they discovered 20 more moons around saturn 
it overtook the number. So Saturn is now leading as a planet with the largest number of moons. Yes, the largest number of moons. So that is um, um, Saturn for you. So it's having 82 now, um, which is three more than that of Jupiter. That of Jupiter. So you come here, you find Uranus after Saturn. So after Saturn, you have Uranus, um, named after the Roman god of the sky. The sky, I think, because of its look and nature, how it looks. So, and how the planet behaves as they name them after those Roman gods. This blue line is actually the planet, the orbit for. Neptune, so the eighth planet, which will be last, the last planet, looking at um, taking Pluto out, so the last planet, so Neptune becomes the last, and that is how we have the eighth planet in the solar system, the sun in the middle, then we have the Mercury, followed by Venus, followed by Earth, followed by Jupiter, sorry, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. So Uranus has, uh, actually, um, they, they say, was a grandfather of, in, in Greek mythology or Greek myth, or their mythical stories, the name Uranus actually um, was the, grandfather of um, um, Zeus and Zeus was Jupiter okay and the father of Saturn the which was Cronus Saturn was called Cronus so Jupiter as Zeus and um, Saturn as Cronus so we can find that in their story in their story so that makes up what we call the solar system and the eight uh, planets. So the solar sun, solar representing or meaning the sun. And that is how they move in that elliptical manner, not a circular manner. So take note of that, not circular, but rather elliptical elliptical so these shapes are over they are over shape or movement and they all revolve around the sun because the sun is using its power of gravity to control them and cause them to move around it by the two forces named centripetal and centrifugal forces those who are very good um, at their science lessons to know or get what i'm talking about those forces you can check their meanings and know how they move, how things are able to move in a circular manner by a certain force. Okay, so this is just um, what I was trying to um, describe on the board. And I believe it has helped you to see how our planet orbit or how our planet revolve around the sun in the universe or in space all right so our earth is here this is where we live and claim life is here it's about 70 percent of water and then 30 percent of land so you and i are here this is gcl tutorials thanks for watching this lesson and in our uh, next lesson, we'll be looking at other heavenly bodies apart from the planet. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.